Hello everyone, this is Yashveen here from Exam Help Web. Today, I'm, in this video, I'm going to be completing, I'm going to be proceeding with Paper 4, Variant 2 of May June 2019, Chemistry 0620. Starting with question number 5, Copper 2 Sulfate Crystals are hydrated. Copper sulfate crystals are made by reacting copper carbonate with dilute, dilute sulfuric acid. The equation for the overall process is shown. So we have copper carbonate reacting with sulfuric acid and water, giving us hydrated copper sulfate and carbon dioxide. Step 1. Powdered solid copper, sulf copper carbonate is added to 50 cm cube of 0 0.05 mole per dm cube sulfuric acid until the copper carbonate is in excess. The ex excess of copper carbonate is separated from aqueous copper sulfate. The aqueous copper sulfate is heated until the solution is saturated. Step 4. The solution is allowed to cool and crystallize. Step 5. The crystals are removed and dried. Okay, so A. Calculate the maximum mass of copper sulfate crystals that can form using the following steps. Calculate the number of moles of had sulfuric acid in 50 cm cube of 0 0.05 mole per dm cube. Okay, so we can uh, use the formula moles is equal to concentration into volume, but we're going to be converting this 50 cm cube to um, dm cube to have the same units. So this would be divided by 1000. This would give us 0 0.05 dm cube. And then we multiply it with the concentration which is also 0 0.05 which gives us the answer as 0 0.0025 moles okay so we have the answer as 0 0.0025 determine the number of moles of copper sulfate that can form. Okay, so here we had the number of moles of sulfuric acid 0 0.025. As we can see in the equation, one mole of hydrochloric of sulfuric acid gives one mole of copper sulfate, which would mean we would also get the same number of moles over here in this case. So 0 0.025 moles of sulfuric acid would give 0 0.0025 moles of copper sulfate. The MR of copper sulfate is 250. Calculate the mass of copper sulfate that can form. So mass is moles into molar mass, which would mean 250 multiplied with 0.0025 moles. And this gives us the answer as 0.625 grams. That is the mass. B steps 1 to 5 were done exactly, but the mass of crystals obtained was less than the maximum mass. Explain why. Alright, so one of the reasons could be that um, all of the crystals were not filtered and they might have remained in the solution. So some of C. State two observations that would indicate that copper to carbonate is in excess in step 1. Okay, so in step 1, we add copper carbonate, uh, excess copper carbonate to sulfuric acid. How, how would we get to know if um, copper carbonate is an acid? Well, we mean to um, get all the acid reacted and once the reaction has stopped, some amount of copper, copper carbonate would remain behind. So the indication of the reaction having been completed would be that the bubbles would stop forming and the stop solid, that is copper carbonate, would stop dissolving since all of the acid would have reacted. So.
Okay. D. When the reaction in step 1 is done using lumps of copper, copper carbonate instead of water, the rate of reaction decreases, all other conditions are kept the same. Give a reason for this, explain your answer in terms of particle. So the smaller the surface area, the lower the rate of reaction since the number of collisions would decrease. And that is the reason that the rate of reaction decreases. E. Name a, name a different substance other than copper carbonate that could be added to dilute sulfuric acid to produce copper sulfate in step 1. Okay. So we want copper sulfate exactly as it is in step 1. That is we want hydrated copper sulfate. And we need, uh, the question is asking us to replace this compound with any other substance which could give us copper sulfate, copper sulfate crystals. And I'd rather go with copper hydroxide because um, that would, that might give us hydrated copper sulfate. So, we'd have copper hydroxide. Name the process used to separate aqueous copper sulfate from the excess of copper 2 carbonate in step 2. So we're separating solid from liquid and we'll be using filtration for this. G. The solution of aqueous copper 2 sulfate was heated until it was saturated in step 2. One suggest what is meant by the term saturated solution. Well, adding a, a solution in which no more solute can dissolve at the same temperature is a saturated solution. Two, what evidence would show that the solution was saturated in step 3? Well, um, you could test it by dipping a glass rod into the solution and drawing it back. When you pull it out of the solution, you'd see crystals on the surface forming and that would be evidence enough. Three, why would the aqueous copper sulfate not be heated to dryness in step 3? That would dehydrate the crystals. And we do not want that. Okay. Question number 5 is also completed. Question number six, the halogens are the elements in group seven of the periodic table. Predict A, predict the physical state and the color of acetine at room temperature and pressure. So this is a solid substance and has a dark color, so I'm going to put black. B, when chlorine reacts with aqueous potassium bromide, a displacement reaction occurs. One, describe the color change of the solution so we have um, initially we have the compound potassium bromide and after reaction it gets converted to pot potassium chlorine that is in the product we'll be having bromine which is brown in color so on the product side we'd have uh, brown color and previously this compound was 
colorless so it would have been colorless it changes from colorless to brown to write a chemical equation for this reaction okay so we have potassium bromide reacting with chlorine gas forming potassium chloride and bromine gas since we have um, two chlorine atoms on the reactant side we can equate it over here as well this is bromine gas existing as a di diatomic molecule and we can equate it over here so we have two potassium bromine and chlorine atoms on both the sides reactions occur when some aqueous solutions of halogens are added to aqueous solutions of halides use the key to complete the table to show the results of adding halogens to halides so halogens are the elements themselves and halides are the compounds of halogens so since chlorine is the most reactive element in the group it is going to be reacting whenever it re reacts with any halide so here the reaction also occurs now bromine is more is not more reactive Bromine, bromine is less reactive than chlorine so the reaction does not occur it cannot displace chlorine from this compound however bromine is more reactive than iodine so a reaction would occur where this bromine would displace iodine and since iodine is the least reactive of the three it would not be able to displace any of them so no reaction would occur um with question number seven a displacement reaction occurs between metals and non-metals and metal ions. Displacement reactions can be used to determine the order of reactivity of metals such as lead, nickel, and silver. The ionic equation for displacement reaction is shown. The ionic half equations for this reaction are shown. The ionic half equations show that electrons are donated by nickel, nickel atoms, and accepted by lead ions. One identify the reducing agent in the displacement reaction. Give a reason for your answer. All right. So reducing agent is the one that itself gets oxidized or loses electrons. And as you can see over here, nickel atom is the one which loses electrons. So nickel is the reducing agent, and the reason is that is it loses electrons. Two, what is the general term given to the type of reaction in which electrons are transferred from one species to another? That is a redox reaction. Since both reduction and oxidation are occurring, the ionic equation for another displacement reaction is shown. Write the two ionic, ionic half equations for this reaction. Okay, so we have the lead forming an ion by losing two electrons and gaining a charge of 2 plus and then we have the silver ion gaining electron to become the silver metal itself and we need to write it in the simplest form use the information in a and b to put three metals lead nickel and silver in order of reactivity so as you can see over here uh, lead becomes an ion that is it displaces Lead displaces silver, so it is more reactive than silver. So we can write silver as less reactive than lead, but and also we can see over here nickel displaces lead over here, which means nickel would be more reactive than lead. So now we can write the order of reactivity with nickel being the most reactive. followed by lead and then silver d nickel is a transition element nickel is stronger than sodium describe two other differences in the physical properties of nickel and sodium well nickel has higher density and 
and it also has a higher melting point. E. Predict one difference in the appearance of aqueous solutions of nickel compounds compared to aqueous solutions of sodium compounds. Since nickel is a transition element, it would form colorful compounds. F. Copper is refined by electrolysis. Nickel can be refined using a similar method. One, the, di the diagram shows the refining of nickel by electrolysis. Complete the labels in the boxes. Okay, so anode is going to be made of impure copper. So that once it gets oxidized or loses electrons, the nickel ions would be uh, would have a charge of 2 plus and then they would be attracted to a cathode forming uh, the metal nickel on its surface. And electrolyte can be any aqueous solution of nickel. To indicate by writing N on the diagram where nickel is produced. So it is produced on the cathode. Thanks for watching and if you want to check out other videos, you can search our channel Exam Help Web.